Assalamu alaikum. Um, today we'll begin chapter 3 in chemistry, which talks about the chemical combination. So basically we'll be talking about the bonds that uh, occur between the atoms in order to form different compounds. So we will begin our uh, first type of bonds, which is the ionic bond. The first thing that we have to know about the ionic bond is that it occurs between metals and nonmetals. And accordingly, we can say that they always take place or occur between the extremes of the periodic table because metals are found on the left side of the periodic table and nonmetals are found on the other side or the right side of the periodic table, as we can see. Uh, also, we have to know that the ionic bonds doesn't have a materialistic existence, but they occur due to electro static attraction. This means that there is no sharing of electrons. There is an attraction force that attracts the ions, that's why it's called the ionic bond, so that the compound can be formed. This is because that metals always convert into positive ions or cations and non-metals always convert into negative ions or anions. So attraction occurs between positive and negative ions forming the compounds. Let's have an example like magnesium fluoride MdCl2 magnesium and fluorine so the atomic number of magnesium is 12 and the atomic number of fluorine is 17 now the conversion into positive and negative ion depends on the atomic number of the element. In order to help this element reach the same atomic number of the nearest inert gas in the periodic table to this number or to this element. So let's see, magnesium, the nearest uh, inert gas to this element is neon and it has the atomic structure of 10 electrons. Fluorine is just before argon, which has the atomic structure or the atomic number of 18 electrons. So the needs of the elements are as follows. Magnesium needs to lose these two electrons in order to reach the number of 10. And fluorine needs to get one electron to reach the same atomic number as argon. Basically, magnesium loses two electrons and each atom of chlorine gets the electron it needs in order to reach the atomic number of 18. So as magnesium reached the state of neon and chlorine reached the state of argon, um, they attract each other through the electrostatic attraction and they form the ionic bond. So, this is how the ionic bond goes. Now, we have to know also that uh, metals always lose electrons because they are large uh, sized atoms. So, the attraction force between the electrons at the outermost energy level and the nucleus is um, less than the nonmetals, and accordingly, this uh, can help the electrons to move away from the uh, nucleus easily. On the contrary, uh, in the nonmetals, the volume of the atom is small, so there is a great attraction force between the nucleus and the outermost energy levels, electrons, and this doesn't uh, just help the electrons to stick to the nucleus, but it can also attract electrons from the outside. That's why always uh, nonmetals accept electrons from the outside while metals lose the electrons in the outside or the outermost energy levels. Um, so, this is uh, related to the size of the atom. Now we will talk about electronegativity. Electronegativity, as we mentioned before, is the tendency of the atom to attract 
electrons in, uh, inside a compound. So it's related to the atom in a combined state with another atom and not in a single state. So the electronegativity is related to numbers, so as the number increases, the electronegativity of the element increases. The electronegativity of sodium is 0 0.9, magnesium is 1.2, and aluminum is 1.5. And the electronegativity of chlorine is 3. So, the electronegativity of compounds is related to um, the fact that they are ionic or they are covalent compounds. So, if the electronegativity of the compound is more than 1.7, we can say that this compound is ionic and from the ionic properties it is high boiling point, high melting point, and the conductivity of electricity. So we can say that here in sodium chloride, the difference in electronegativity at 3 and equal to 0.9 gives uh, 2.1, which is higher than 1.7. That's why sodium here in this uh, group of compounds is very good at conducting electricity, uh, its boiling point is high and melting point is high. Magnesium. The electronegativity of magnesium is 1.2. So uh, when we calculate the electronegativity of the whole compound, we say 3 negative 1.2 gives 1.8, which is still higher than 1.7. So it's also considered as an ionic compound. It has a relatively high melting point, boiling point, which is near to sodium. Uh, sodium chloride and it's good at conducting electricity. Well, when you talk about aluminum chloride, the electronegativity of aluminum is 1.5, so when we calculate the electronegativity of the whole compound, we say 3 negative 1.5 gives 1.5, which is less than 1.7. So this compound is not ionic, it's covalent, and we can say and we can see this from uh, the melting point, which is very low if it's compared to magnesium chloride and sodium chloride, when it's heated, it evaporates at once, and its electric conductivity is bad. So, this is how to differentiate between compounds, or how to know if a compound is ionic or covalent. So, What's a covalent bond? That's what we'll know in the next time, and until then, I thank you for watching and see you.